Snacks, one of the things we've been hearing a lot about is how good the food has been. And it's not just delicious. At a patient-centric health conference like MedX, we've been incredibly cognizant of some of the dietary restrictions for some of the conference attendees. So I've assembled a few people here who have a particular interest in health and food. So why don't you guys introduce yourselves and uh, explain why health and food is so important to you. My name is Terry, and I'm a breast cancer survivor, and I've also been gluten intolerant for seven years. So it's been wonderful to come to a conference and know that I can eat and that it's healthy and it's safe for me. Thank you. Hi, I'm Peggy Polineski. I'm a gynecologist, a medical blogger, and a foodie. I blog about medicine and food and that its interaction. Excellent. And I'm Deanna Atai. I'm a breast surgeon, and I'm also gluten intolerant for several years. And as Terry said, it's really nice to be able to come to a conference, participate, and enjoy the food, know you're going to be okay after eating. So um, can someone talk to me a little bit about the importance of f food in healthcare? Well, some, some things are just simple. A quantity of food equals calories equals, you know, healthy weight. So that's a real important uh, indication for sticking to a healthy diet. Um, the other thing is that certain foods can affect medical conditions, uh, gluten intolerance being, being a really important one. And some simple ones um, such as red wine causing hot flashes. That's a good one. Yeah, and a lot of people don't know that. Um, so, um, Terry, do you want to talk a little bit about how your um, gluten intolerance affects the food choices you make every day? Well, I, it's been really challenging because I'm on the road almost all the time, and so eating on the road can be really difficult because if I eat gluten, I have really terrible symptoms. And so it, it becomes such a factor when you're traveling, but when it's there and it's safe, you just don't have to think about it. So you can focus on all the other things that you should be thinking about at a conference. That's great. That's great. Um, and do you want to tell us a little bit about how it is to be a physician who has an interest in food and how we can bring more um, awareness to uh, allergies and food intolerances into the medical sphere? Well, part of it is by us just being here and speaking about it and and letting people know. For a couple of years when I was first diagnosed, I would go to conferences and just eat what was there because I didn't want to make a scene. Um, and then I would get sick. And I finally got smart and realized I need to speak up for myself because this is my health. And, and as Terry said, you just have to prepare a little bit more when you're traveling. It's nice to be able to come to a meeting like this and know that you just don't have to worry about that. Did you learn at all about nutrition and food in medical school? We learned some very basics, but that was also a number of years ago. I think the education is much better now. We also have a much better understanding of the connections between nutrition and what we put into our bodies and our overall health in terms of reducing the incidence of disease, potentially preventing certain diseases. And that I think more and more physicians, and especially young physicians, have a much better awareness now, just as the public does as well. Has any of you ever had a physician speak with you about um, food and how it's affecting your health? I would say not really. You know, I'm, I'm loving hearing Dr. Atai talk about it. I think it's such an important element that even going through cancer, it, it wasn't highlighted as much as it could have been. Actually, in, in pregnancy, we talk a lot to our patients about food. We talk about alcohol. We talk about certain kinds of fish they need to avoid. Um, and so, so, yeah, we talk about it a lot. Great. Well, um, what do you say we take um, a little bit of a taste? These are some of the gluten-free options from today's lunch. We're getting a little sneak preview. Um, so here we have peppers that are stuffed with quinoa. Now, quinoa is a grain, but correct me if I'm wrong, people with gluten intolerance still can eat grains like quinoa. Is that correct? Quinoa is gluten-free. Quinoa is gluten-free. Okay. So we have the pepper stuffed with quinoa. We have an asparagus salad here, and then we have some roast carrots. So does so everyone want to grab a fork and we can... See what we think? So I'm not gluten-free, so for me, I wasn't sure how difficult it is to incorporate a gluten-free diet into an everyday lifestyle. Mm -hmm. how, how, does that, how is that for you? It's getting easier. Seven years ago, it was really challenging. Um, we were talking about at conferences, you would eat lettuce and cheese, but now there's just so many more options, so it's getting easier. It looks so appetizing. Do you eat farro? Uh, farro is actually wheat-based. Yeah, mm. so farro I don't eat. Next that one. Next that one. Well, let's take a bite of this and we'll see if gluten-free can There's also be delicious. Yeah. Mmm. Mm -hmm. It certainly can be. Mm -hmm. That's really good. It has a really sort of a hearty taste there. Oh, it's mm -hmm. delicious. Mm -hmm. The it's nice so thing good. about quinoa is you can mix it with anything. Mm -hmm. And it'll take on the flavor of whatever you mix it with. So you can turn it into any kind of dish that you want. 
And what is the nutritional value of quinoa? Is it something that's healthy for you? Is it a healthy choice? It's actually very high in protein, and it's protein. a complete protein. So especially if you're vegetarian or mm -hmm. vegan, it's actually a great way to get a good quality protein source. Well, great. I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> all right. Well, I hope uh, you enjoy this, and I hope we all enjoy lunch today. Yes. This is Haley with The Buzz.